we're going to start by uh, lying on the ground. Um, we're going to come into what's known as the neutral supine position. Um, so you're going to um, lie with your legs uh, bent, your knees bent, your feet flat on the ground, your toes pointing away from you. You want to keep um, both the knees and the feet in line with the hips, so hip distance apart. Um, so we're not out like this. We're not uh, letting the knees fall together. We're keeping everything hip distance apart. And um, another important factor is the position of the back. Uh, so we're going to do some adjustments just to uh, really get a feel for the position of the back against the mat. In a perfect world, you already have, you've got heavy bum, heavy back ribs, and a natural lightness right here in the low back where you have a natural slight arch. Um, we're going to play around with uh, that a little bit. We're going to do a little bit of a hip tilt um, isolation exercise with the hips. Um, but also it's going to give us a really good feel for um, what it is to be shifting around in that low back and what the pelvis does to affect the low back. So you're going to start by tilting the pelvis up like so. I've got a mic pack digging into my back right now, <laughs> so please bear with me. We're going to inhale and we're going to tilt to send the hips towards the legs. And you're going to exhale to tilt the hips to point up towards the upper body. So think about the hip bones pointing up towards the upper body. And then think about the hip bones pointing down in theory towards the legs are gonna kind of point up. Another analogy is it's like you've got a, a table top here and there's a cup of tea on it. And you're spilling that cup of tea towards your upper body. And then you're spilling that cup of tea towards your legs. Um, and you'll notice that as you shift in the pelvis, what naturally happens is your low back presses against the mat. That's why my mic pack's digging into me. And when you tilt towards your legs, then your uh, back naturally arches a little bit more, lifts off the mat. And just a couple more times. I'd like you to be careful that you're just tilting the pelvis. We're not getting to a point where we tilt the pelvis and then squeeze the bum and lift. We're not getting to that point. We don't want to do that. We want to just isolate the tilt of the pelvis. And I also would like you to be careful that when you're tilting down towards the legs, that you're not just inflating the belly and not actually moving in the pelvis. You want to get those hip bones pointing down and pointing up. All right, so that should be good. What we want is a position right in between that. So we're not tilting down, we're not tilting up, we're going to sink right down into a natural position where we've got heavy bum, heavy back ribs, and that natural lightness in the low back. We're going to stay in that position, we're going to bring our arms to our sides, uh, and I'm just going to get a little bit of a um, work out the shoulders a little bit. I'm going to get you to angel your arms up, let the arms lift slightly at the Y position, because we also want to pay attention to keeping our ribs heavy. And you'll notice that if you, uh, you're skimming your fingertips along the floor, skimming your fingertips along the floor, when we get to the Y position, if you try to keep your straight arms and your fingertips on the floor, then what naturally ends up happening is your ribs end up lifting off the mat. We don't want to do that. We want to keep those ribs nice and heavy. That's going to automatically cause the arms to just lift a couple inches off the floor. Allow that to happen. You'll be able to skim to about the Y position, and then they're going to lift a little bit. Imagine strings pulling to the tips of your fingers, getting a nice stretch in those shoulders as you angel the arms up. Exhale to angel the arms back down. Good, all right. So from here, we're gonna bring the arms down to the sides. We're gonna get nice and strong in this core. We're gonna inhale. You're gonna exhale to get even stronger in the core. You're not going to change shape. When we do any exercise where we're lifting the legs, the most important thing is keeping that stable shape in the spine that we've just reviewed. You're going to inhale, keeping that strength, and exhale, use the strength of your core to float one leg up to 90 degrees, and then the other, we want to do our best to be lifting those legs from the stomach and not shifting around in the low back. We're going to keep that nice, strong, Stable torso as we straighten one leg. And then we're going to 
Exhale to pull that leg back to 90 degrees. Gonna inhale to straighten the other leg and exhale to pull back. Inhale through the nose and exhale through rounded lips as you pull back. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. We want to um, make sure that we're not shifting the pelvis down as we straighten the legs. If you start to shake in the core, that's great. That's the core staying nice and active. You only want to lower your legs as far as you can keep your uh, torso stable. So if that's up here, then that's a good modification for you to do. That's as low as you should go. If that's as low as you can go while keeping that torso stable, that's as low as you go. Um, and if, you, if you are able to lower all the way down to here, then do, challenge yourself. Go as low as you can keep that stability in your core and no lower. Good. I'm gonna spin around just because of the angle of the hill that I'm on here. I'm gonna do a few more. Straightening the legs and then pulling back. Straightening the leg and pulling back to 90 degrees. You're also being careful that you're only coming back to 90 degrees. So what automatically ends up happening if you pull the legs past 90 degrees is um, you end up shifting in the low back. So automatically your pelvis tilts up towards the upper body and your low back presses against the mat. Our main goal once again is that we're not shifting around in the low back. So you wanna only come up to 90 degrees. You wanna also hold that leg that you're not moving at 90 degrees and make sure that it's not I'm going to do it wrong following the leg down like that. Keep that leg that you're not moving at 90 degrees. Keep alternating legs. Okay, let's just do a couple more. Straighten and pull back and straighten and pull back. Good. All right, we're going to bring the legs down. Um, I'm gonna go through a quick little um, exercise that's related to the pelvic tilt that we did. Um, and I'd like you guys to pay attention to this exercise. If you feel you're getting any tension building in the low back or you're getting any tension um, in the hip flexors, uh, this is a nice, simple little stretch that you can easily just go back to, um, work out the tension and then go back to the exercise that we were doing. So you're going to start with your feet and knees hip distance apart in that neutral supine position we were at the start. You're gonna begin by tilting your pelvis and now you're gonna squeeze your glutes. You're going to peel your spine off the mat vertebrae by vertebrae, come into a straight line from knees to shoulders. You're gonna to inhale at the top. You're gonna to exhale to work your way down, upper back, middle back, lower back presses into the mat and then you relax your pelvis into neutral. You're gonna inhale at the bottom. You're gonna to exhale to tilt the pelvis Sequence your spine off the mat, vertebrae by vertebrae, bit by bit. And then you're going to inhale the top and you're gonna to exhale once again to work your way down, upper back, middle back, lower back presses into the mat. And then you relax your pelvis, just tilting back into that nice neutral spine. So um, we'll do one more of those just to get it solidified into your mind. Remember that you can return to this exercise anytime you need to just work out any tension in the back or in the hips. Good. All right. I'm going to get you now to, I can't knit my fingertips. <laughs> the guy you to knit your fingertips and bring your hands behind your head. You're going to look straight ahead and bring your elbows so that they're just um, wide enough so you can see them out of the corners of your eyes. You're going to keep them that nice and wide. You're not going to pull them in like this as you do the exercise. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to think about the front of our body curling us up. You're going to inhale to lower down with control. Exhale, curling up using the front of your body to pull you up and lowering down. 
You're keeping your elbows nice and wide, so as you raise up, this isn't happening. That's a guarantee that you're pulling on your neck. I want to make sure that you're just using those hands to sort of cradle your head. You're not using them to pull yourself further into the movement. You're not using the arms to pull you up. You're using the front of your body to curl up. And I'd like you to come to that sticking point just a little bit further. And then lower down. Exhale to curl up to that sticking point and then push just a little bit further and lower down. Exhale to curl up to that sticking point, go a little bit further and then lower down. And then this time what I'm going to get you to do is I'm going to get you to curl up. You're going to stay at that sticking point and then I'm going to get you to um, just think about squeezing. It's going to, that squeeze is going to cause you to come up just another couple inches or so. Um, and, or another inch, another couple inches, just going to cause a slight movement. But that movement is coming um, not from a pulse or momentum. It's not coming from you rocking. It's coming from a squeeze of the core. So squeeze, 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 squeeze. This is going to start to kill really fast. You're going to feel this if you're doing it right very quickly. Um, I want you to once again double check that you're not using momentum. You're not rocking. You're squeezing, squeeze, 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 and lower down. Take a quick breather. If we're going to do it again, you're going to inhale. And you're going to exhale to curl up. Keep those elbows nice and wide using the front of your body. And then you're going to squeeze, 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 pulse, pulse, squeeze. Using those core muscles to squeeze. It causes a little movement. You're not using momentum to rock back and forth. Every movement comes from the core. Squeeze, 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 squeeze. Squeeze, 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 and lower back down. Good. Another couple deep breaths. Just relax there for a moment. Inhale through the nose and exhale through rounded lips. Inhale through the nose. Let those ribs widen and exhale through rounded lips. Good. All right. So I'm going to get you now to curl up. You're going to inhale to rotate to the side. You're going to exhale to pull yourself back to center. Um, we're pulling with the side of our body, not with our arms. Still, we're keeping those elbows nice and wide. We're pulling ourselves back using the muscles in the core on the opposite side of the body. And inhale to rotate and exhale to pull back. Inhale to rotate. Exhale to pull back. You want to make sure that your hips aren't following you. So your hips are staying stable. There's an area right here in the waist. You've got mobility. Your hips don't need to follow you. You're going to pull back. Inhale to rotate. Exhale 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 to pull back. Keeping those elbows nice and wide. Inhale to rotate. Exhale to pull back. Inhale to rotate. Exhale. The opposite side of the body pulls you back to center. Inhale and exhale. Those hips are staying stable. Just relax the hips. Relax the bum against the mat. Not following you. And that's going to become important when we do uh, the more advanced version of the two exercises that we just did recently. When we combine the legs and the arms. Good. Inhale to rotate. Exhale to pull back. One more on the other side. Inhale to rotate. Exhale to pull back. And inhale to rotate. Exhale to pull back. Lower down. And one quick deep breath. Bring your arms down to your sides for now. And you're going to exhale to get strong in that core. Think about your back not changing shape. You're going to inhale and keep that strength. You're going to exhale, use the strength in your core to float one leg up to 90 degrees and then the other. 
You're going to keep the legs hip distance apart, the knees are hip distance apart, the feet are hip distance apart. We're not angling the knees out and bringing the feet together. Keep everything hip distance apart. You can once again bring your hands behind your head. And you're going to inhale and exhale to curl up. This time you're going to combine the two exercises. So you're going to inhale and exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale to rotate and straighten. And exhale to pull back. Inhale to rotate and straighten. And exhale to pull back once again if you need to make the adjustment of uh, not lowering the legs as much. If that's as low as you want to go as you rotate, then that's okay. Or if you find that both of these together is just not an option for you, then you can just maybe come up into the, um, uh, the ab curl here and then just do the legs like that. And if you can't retain that, you can also lower down and just do whatever you're able to throughout this exercise. This is fine. If this is what you can do, then that's what you can do. That's okay. If we're continuing to do the exercise in the full form though, we're inhaling to rotate and exhaling to pull back. Inhaling to rotate, exhaling to pull back. What I want you to be careful of is a lot of the time when people have done this exercise in different forms, they tend to do this. We're not trying to touch our elbow to our knee right now. Um, we're keeping nice and strong control. We're making sure that we're not shifting around in the hips, which is causing our low back to press against the mat. We're keeping that exercise as is, nice and strong, nice and stable for each repetition. Good, we're gonna lower our legs back down to the mat. And then we're just going to pull our knees in. Um, you can pull in a little further. I'm getting that mic pack digging right into my spine right now, but you shouldn't have that going on. So just pull those knees in and let your back curve, stretching against the mat. Just rest here, breathe nice and deep. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Pull your knees in. Inhale and exhale. Um, be careful about your shoulders creeping up. Keep the shoulders back and down. Good. Lowering the legs again. We'll do a couple more of those bridges. We're going to tilt the pelvis, get the low back against the mat. You're going to sequence your spine off the mat vertebrae by vertebrae, you're gonna inhale, and then exhale to work your way down, upper back, middle back, lower back presses into the mat, and then you're gonna relax your pelvis into neutral. You're gonna inhale at the bottom, and exhale to tilt the pelvis, sequence your spine off the mat vertebrae by vertebrae, inhale at the top, and exhale to work your way down, bit by bit, relaxing at the bottom, inhale, and exhale to tilt the pelvis one last time. Inhale at the top. And exhale, strong core, strong glutes as you sequence your weight down. Your bum is trying to fight gravity. Your, it wants to be the last thing to reach the mat. Once your low back presses against the mat, then your bum relaxes into the mat, returning your spine to neutral. All right, great job, guys. Um, that's just a simple little core workout that you can do at home.